Good morning, and thank you for joining us for another edition of Coffee with Tom and Joanne. I'm Joanne Toronto. And I'm Tom Matthews. And today we're going to talk about buyer morale and how to keep yourself in a positive mindset in this crazy buyer's market that we're in right now, or crazy seller's market, technically, that we're in right now here in the Massachusetts area, specifically around Concord, Massachusetts. So Joanne, what are some things that buyers can do to help keep their morale up as they wade into the waters in 2022? Yeah, so I think as we move forward into the market of 2022, it's really important for agents to be having this conversation with their buyers about, you know, keeping everybody in a in a positive mind space, because there are a lot of houses that will meet the needs of each buyer. And it's about securing the right property with the right utility. So by starting out with a plan in place and having, you know, a checklist of the of the must haves, you know, number of bedrooms, number of bathrooms, location and so forth, then you guys can stay focused and stay targeted on what you're trying to accomplish. And it's important to remember that, you know, buying a home is not necessarily like finding a spouse. There's not just one that's going to be great for you and or your family. So it's important to keep in mind that variety is there and that there's more than one house that will come to the market that will meet your needs. And, you know, planning is such a great idea, Joanne, because so often people just go into house hunting kind of haphazardly. And, And Joanne and I really believe that planning process is just so critical. And, you know, we start that process by having a quick initial call to talk with people about buying. Then we talk about your needs and wants, as Joanne talked about. And then we introduce a concept called the BATNA. And that is your best alternative to a negotiated agreement. Because you have to keep the open mind and keep your emotions in in check so that if you get into a negotiation on a property, and, and we're looking at the historical data, and we're looking at the neighborhood, and and the prices are escalating above those norms. Do you want to be a trendsetter? Or do you want to say, you know what, I'm going to back off. Although this house checks a lot of boxes, you know, for me, I'm not prepared to set the new market pace. And I want to step back. Now, there are different buyers, different ways to engage. And those are things that you have to think about in the utility that Joanne talked about, the utility of the house. Because if the house really works, and it's within your comfort range, and you could be in it for the next 10 or 15 years, maybe you are the buyer that sets the trend. What were you going to say, Joanne? I think that the horizon of how long you want to stay in the home and and what your vision is for using that home over the next 7, 10, 15, or 20 years, the thought process is to remain emotionally controlled, which is so hard to do. Mm -hmm. We get it. You see a house that you love, you're thinking about where the sofa goes and which way the bed will face in the bedroom and how you're, what colors you're going to paint. And there's a lot of emotion that comes very quickly when you find a house that you really like. But if you want to make good financial responsible decisions, it's important to keep your emotions in check. And that's a really hard thing for us to tell buyers agents as buyers agents, because we want this to be a happy and emotional process for you. But in the market that we're in right now, it can bring you on a roller coaster that brings you to a place where you don't enjoy it, where this is a tedious process and nobody wants you to feel that way. So learning the ropes, writing offers, getting comfortable with what you're looking at and what your goals are. And those might be moving targets throughout the season. So just being able to have that handle on the emotions is really going to benefit you. And that's how we're all going to stay kind of rowing in the same direction mm-hmm. in our boat. Because if we're not all rowing in the same direction and keeping open lines of communication, this can become not fun. And yeah. it, it should be fun. It should be educational. And this is about, you know, your next stage in life which is really important. And we want that to be an enjoyable experience. Yeah. And I just want, I want to say one thing about that, the offer piece, Joanne, that you brought up is that, you know, it's important to write offers so that you learn the process, but you don't want to just write offers willy nilly. You you only want to write offers on homes that you love 
and you could see yourself living it. Right. And people say like, why don't we just throw an offer in? And, and the reason you don't just want to throw an offer in is that because the emotions, you can become emotionally engaged because when you put forward pen to paper and you're putting up that earnest check, the possibility is there that you could secure this property. Agreed. And what, what we don't want to have happen, Joanne and I, probably last year in 2021, we probably secured towards the tail end of the year, five or six new buyer clients who ended the relationship with their prior realtor. And one of the biggest complaints was that we were just putting in so many offers and not getting any of them accepted. And as we were analyzing thing, things, oftentimes they were just putting in offers just to put in offers. And our philosophy is you put in an offer if it's a home you think you can live in and you would love. And then if you don't get it, you're upset, but you went for something great. So therefore you reduce the amount of offers you write. And when you do secure the home you have, you're not emotionally drained. And that's really important to Joanne and I for keeping buyer morale. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us today. This was a great conversation about buying real estate. I'm Joanne Toronto. And I'm Tom Matthews. Cheers. Cheers.